Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. It is Monday, January 29th, 2024. I hope everyone had a very enjoyable, relaxing, productive weekend. I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to those of you who have bought me many cups of coffee over the weekend. Yep, gotta keep me going. Have you heard the latest? They want us to cut back on our coffee consumption to only two to three cups a year. Did you know that coffee plants have been planted along the Suez Canal to help with pollution and soil erosion? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Anyways, I think this is very important. At the World Economic Forum, WEF, in Davos, Switzerland, this past week, they were discussing about what to do about Disease X. Have you heard about Disease X? Disease X being discussed there at the WEF refers to the big unknown disease that has been on the World Health Organization, WHO's, blueprint since 2018. It included the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Ebola, Lassa fever, Zinka, and of course COVID-19. They discussed the biggest and most worrisome threat to the coming years may be a yet-to-be-identified disease. Disease X marks or represents the next unknown pathogen that will wreak havoc sometime in the near future. And the operative would be that it will happen, not maybe. Today it was reported in Bangladesh that they had their first fatality this year from the brain-damaging Nipah virus. The man died supposedly after drinking raw date juice. The virus transmitted to humans through contact with bodily fluids from infected bats, pigs, or other people was first identified in 1999 during an outbreak affecting farmers and others in contact with pigs in Malaysia. Since then, it has led to outbreaks in Bangladesh, India, Singapore, killing more than 160 people in Bangladesh. Its fatality rate is estimated at 40 to 75 percent, according to the World Health Organization. There are no treatments or vaccines for the virus. Infection with the virus can cause mild to severe disease, according to the CDC. Symptoms often begin with a headache and drowsiness, but can quickly transform into a coma within a matter of days. It can also cause acute respiratory syndrome where the lungs cannot get enough oxygen to the body and fatal encephalitis and inflation of the brain. Cases of human-to-human -human transmission of Nipah have also been reported during past outbreaks, particularly among families and caregivers of people who are infected or were infected. Even though the typical symptoms arise just a few days to two weeks after infection, according to the WHO, there has been periods as long as 45 days um, between exposure and infection has been reported. They call the Nipah virus a zoonotic virus, meaning that it can spread between animals and people. Fruit bats, also called flying foxes, are the animal reservoir for the NIV in nature. The Nipah virus is also known to cause illnesses in pigs and in people caring for the pigs. Late last year in India, they had two people who died from the virus, uh, prompting officials to shut down schools and testing hundreds of people to prevent its spread. It was southern India's fourth outbreak since 2018. The Nipah virus was first identified during a 1998 and 1999 outbreak in Malaysia, where nearly 300 people were infected and more than 100 died, according to the CDC. More than 1 million pigs were euthanized to halt its spread. Back on January 11th of this year, it was reported that Oxford University began its first inhuman trial for the Nipah virus vaccine. This vaccine is based on a messenger RNA, mRNA platform, a technology used in several approved COVID vaccines. NI 
AID is sponsoring, sponsoring the phase of one clinical study, which is being conducted at the NIH Clinical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. This is another study, evidently, here in the United States. Yeah, um, yeah, they're preparing for something, right? Will this be the next Disease X? It's evidently in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, we know how well the COVID vaccine has worked, right? I have to be a little suspicious because the National Institute of Health, commonly referred to as the NIH, is the primary agency of the United States government responsible for biomedical and public health research. Many of you might remember back in 2014 when we had the Ebola outbreak. Well, it was the clinical center staff um, that successfully treated the first Ebola virus cases here in the United States. So when you got the UK and the United States government both uh, doing research for this virus, I, I'm sorry, but I have to wonder, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please like and please share. And thank you for the coffee. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.